All right, folks, we're back again. Brian Phillips here with working on this heavy duty, turns you heavy duty, uh, 60C six cell battery. And we've got this, this is called a HXT four millimeter plug, which is like a Hextronics plug. We're gonna be getting rid of this in the Viper Jet, the EC5. I'm not a big fan of the EC5s. But also, I learned how to put these together, and they're kind of weird, and there's a detail that you're probably going to miss if you're not careful. So I'm going to take this uh, battery that I'm retiring, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to take the leads off, and then I'll show you how I will take and use this to make it uh, a viable component for a charger cable an adapter charger for this. It's also going to allow me to use a 6S pack, 6S pack on a plane that uses an XT60 connector, not just the bigger connectors. Just get the soldering iron nice and toasty. Get a little bit of flux on there if you want to make it easy on yourself. Now this battery just uh, it's a piece of crap. I can't remember exactly what all happened to it, but it was one of Esteban's batteries. So I'm just going to desolder this. You could also just cut it off. Just whatever trips your trigger, I guess. And sometimes it's easier if you can feed in some fresh solder. It'll give you a little better contact area for your soldering tip. Okay, so now we can safely remove that. There's just a little bit of solder on the negative side, negative terminal here. We're just taking off the main discharge lead here. Just happens to have an XT60 on it, which is what we need. Of course, I've got XT60s over here. The get those a million of them at a time of course. I'm just going to use this one because I have no use for this battery otherwise. I think there might be two bad cells or one bad cell or something like that. And I just haven't found the time to fix it because it's a 2200 milliamp and I got a bunch of them so I don't really care that much about it. Okay so now we can just set this to the side you can tell which one's the positive by just looking at it, but you can also put a voltmeter on it. Okay, so now that we have that cut off, we're going to make this the same size, generally speaking. <coughs> Excuse me. So obviously we have a pin, and then we have a socket. And the way you can tell is by looking down what these are going to be made up with. So you want to make sure you get that laid out properly, so you don't make any accidents here. Okay, so we'll... We'll have this one ready to go. And the first thing you got to do on these, which is weird, is you got to actually feed these through like this. And then slip that down and see if you can get it over the existing heat shrink neatly. Makes it a little bit easier. And that's going to give your minimum cut distance. Um, so you can't make them any shorter than that. Not without causing yourselves grief. Okay, so I'm just going to cut those, use those for another project sometime, they'll be fine. You do want these to be the same length, very specifically the same length. And then I'm going to strip back just a little bit of the, the cable sheath. This is the first evening I've ever built one of these. So... It's the first time for everything, and mine was tonight on this. It's so cool, didn't cut very good, so I'm just going to use this X-Acto knife to get a nice square cut on the end. So as you can see, it kind of has that weird edge there. We'll just take and slice and dice this here very carefully. I don't want to lose a bunch of the 
little fibers if you will okay so now we know that the negative needs to be over here so we're gonna go ahead and get that ready to solder up and then there's actually a little pinhole on the bottom now it's on the top so we can do this a number of different ways we're gonna try the easy way first see if we can get it to stick before we fight with it so I'm going to touch back here in the back and just get a little bit of a solder in there and I'm just going to let it walk in to the connector and you see how it's you see how it's getting balled up there that's going to prevent you from using this connector if you let it get on there like that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this I'm going to go ahead and pop it off of there. I'm going to take and heat it up really hot. And I'm going to flick this stuff off of there. Because what that's going to do is it's going to stop you from being allowed to get the connector to slip down. And it makes it a real bear cat. I mean, really hard. Okay, so what we're going to do instead, because that obviously sucks and didn't work well, is we're going to go ahead and wick this end. Get the solder into the wire. Let it wick in nicely. Get a pretty fair amount in there. And I have soldering stuff on my list below, guys, on the description there. So if you want to find out what, what type of solders I use and all that good stuff. Soldering tools, these 40 watt irons and things like that. Buy it from the channel or buy it from those links and you'll help support the channel. So appreciate it if you do that. Not a big deal if you, you got a really good buy somewhere locally or you want to support your local hobby shop. But... Okay, so you can see that we need a little bit more solder to satisfy. So now I can go ahead and do some solder inside of here. Just kind of fill up that void a little bit. And we're just going to let that make our connection inside. We're just going to heat around it like this a little bit. And you guys see what's happening now? The same stupid thing, see? The flux now ran out, son of a gun. So, what I can tell you so far is that these connectors are kind of a pain in the butt to build and have a good outcome. You can definitely do it, but you would think they'd make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna clean that out again. And then I'm going to try something a little bit different. Thought for sure I'd have better luck doing this, but guess not. Okay, so this time I'm going to put a little bit more solder into the wire itself. Get that down in there. I'm going to heat only the back of this connector and a little bit of the wire. Heat it up nice and good. And I'm going to leave it just for a second. Let it cool down for a minute here. See, the idea is you do both sides. And then when you're done, you can pull the connector down. That's the idea, at least. Okay, so these forceps help to dissipate the heat a little bit. Once you get that done, you can come over here and spray this Windex or isopropyl alcohol or whatever you've got lying around that works good to clean off flux. That looks like that'll work. It's going to be a tight squeeze to get that pulled on there, but 
That's life in the big city, I guess. Clean the tip good. Come over here and get some solder in that wire on the positive lead. Lots of solder. It's a big wire, it's going to pull up a lot of solder. And just kind of press it down so it's kind of roundish. Roundish. And then we'll take this connector. You always got to make sure you're not grabbing a hot connector when you're doing this stuff because it's pretty easy to forget which one was hot and which one was cool. Okay, now I'm going to dip this in and clean it. Mechanically scrape it off a little bit. Then we get in here with some fresh solder. Staying on the back of the connector. Make my initial solder, get a little bit of solder in there. Let's see, there's a big blob on this side now, so I just gotta knock that off of there. Heat up the wire a little bit, get it to penetrate. Let that heat up for a minute. Make sure I get a good purchase. Hold it for a second until it can cool enough that it can be handled. <clears throat> okay, undo the clamp. Give it a spray. Clean it off. Still pretty toasty. Not a surprise, I guess. Okay, now we can verify the colors. Yep, verify the pin style. And we can slip that down. You see the heat shrink slipped a little bit on this one, just like it did on our first batch. So before I even try to click that other the top portion up, I'm just going to pull this up. See how it's not wanting to pull up, guys? You can get that to work by just heating it up again. Get that nice and warm. Take and run your screwdriver under the edge. You can pull that up. And now that it's in a good spot, now I can heat it up again. Just get the heat shrink to shrink back down. Should be no problem. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we can cool it off again. You can see we've got this loose here. So now you just have to pull this connector together. There it is, snapped in. And so it's going to protect you from reverse polarity. And then when you go to detach, you pull it out and won't undo your connector. So there you have it, guys. So now I can balance charge those upstairs with all my current charging infrastructure. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and switch. Not to an XT60. We're going to put one of these on there. One of the HX, HXT uh, 4 millimeters. So, all right, cool, guys. Thanks for watching. And then also, look at this. If you really want to piss somebody off, you can reverse the polarity on the connector like that. So, um, Alright, so the next video will be on the Viper Jet, putting that connector on. Thanks for watching, guys.